Just how smart is your city? Chances are it's getting smarter every year. From public transit to water supply, from sanitation to street lighting, governments worldwide are racing to infuse technology into every corner of urban life. But here's the secret no one tells you. Most city projects still run on isolated silos, and that's exactly what holds us back. In this video, we're gonna dive into what makes a smart city and how to build one. Stay tuned. What makes a city smart? A smart city uses digital technologies, sensors, connectivity, and data analytics to improve everything from traffic flow to energy use to public safety. You've heard of buzzwords, big data, internet of things, and AI. In places like Singapore, Dubai, Barcelona, cameras and sensors feed real-time data into centralized platforms where they can monitor crowd density, they can dim streetlights on demand, they can pay their bills, track a taxi, or even find an open parking spot with a tap on their phone. The smart city connects everything into one unified infrastructure, so that way all processes within the city can be automated and to improve outcomes. Section two, the hidden cost of data silos. That's the traditional way that cities are approaching this. Each service still lives in its own data silo, its own division. Traffic cameras only talk to the Department of Transportation database, water meters feed a separate utility platform, emergency services relied on radios and spreadsheets and outdated technologies. Building management systems use standalone automation tools. Every system is not connected together, limiting outcomes. Every handoff between those systems is a delay and often a human being. This is one of the reasons projects go over budget, traffic stays gridlocked, emergency response times stall, and citizens face outages, longer commutes, and higher utility costs, higher bills. Your teams wrestle with a disconnected dashboard and endless integration headaches. So what to do? The solution, a unified namespace. The game changer is a unified namespace, or UNS, a single source of truth to secure all of the data built on an open technology, sometimes MQTT, but it could be other protocols such as AMQP, DMP3, NATS, etc. You could think of the unified namespace as the structure and the events of your business. You could think of it as one global chat room for your entire city where every communication is transparent and visible to every other stakeholder. Every sensor, valve, every traffic signal, every transit vehicle publishes its current state into a standardized hierarchy where the city is organized into a structure. Every application or dashboard subscribes to only what it needs. It subscribes to data, creates information, and then publishes the results of that information back to the infrastructure. So no more point-to-point -point spaghetti integrations, no more hidden islands of data, just one living fabric of information powering every service. Mapping your city with ISA 95. In order to make sense of it all, we use ISA 95 part two, a manufacturing standard, and apply it to smart city infrastructure. This standard allows you to create a topical hierarchy of your city. This architecture lets us integrate new systems, scale new capabilities, and give citizens and developers clear context. Here's how ISA 95 part two maps to a city. For example, if you have the ISA 95 standard, which is enterprise, site, area, line, cell, the enterprise in this case could be your state, which is in my case, Utah. The site or your city could be Salt Lake City where I live, or it could be Provo, Ogden. The area underneath the site or the city in this case is your core services. Think lighting, parks, trash, water, traffic, transit, census data, finances, KPIs, the list goes on. And then down under the area, you have the line level or sub departments, fire department, public works, transit authority, and then the cell or the individual assets could be engine one at station three, for example, under the fire department, or it could be valve 42 at a water treatment plant or bus 24 on main street. This topical hierarchy allows you to organize all of the city's data in a folder structure, almost like you're navigating a file structure on your computer. Each folder nests neatly inside of the next, from a statewide oversight right down to a single fire truck speeding to an emergency. At the top layer sits the enterprise, your state. Inside of the state is your city, and within that city, areas cover every municipal service that keeps life running. The line represents sub-departments doing the work, and the cells are the individual assets on the ground. Using this hierarchy allows you to organize all of the data within a city. You may also keep extra folders for employees, expenses, equipment status, 
under each station. These things allow you to create context and workflows, which really allow you to drive improvements and feed that information into AI, which we talk about all the time. And really at 4.0 Solutions, we teach manufacturers how to prepare for AI without just implementing it in a standalone, but how to truly prepare your data infrastructure to take full advantage of AI, giving every sensor, vehicle, and control point a precise home makes data crystal clear. You know exactly where to listen for a fire truck, GPS, a valve's flow rate, or a bus's passenger count. You can automate responses or analyze trends without losing context. Think of it like if a emergency response vehicle is responding to a request and it's traveling down Main Street, you could automate a workflow to automatically give prioritization signal to that emergency response vehicle. Same thing with transit infrastructure or if there is a fire, your fire department needs to be integrated to your water department. Think about what happened with all those fires in California. There wasn't water to actually fight them because the city wasn't smart. A workflow example, emergency response. In this example, station three dispatches engine one. Its GPS location instantly publishes to the unified namespace. We'll do a quick example here. Okay, so this is our fire station, just bear with me. And we got a red fire truck right here. So there's our fire truck and this is station one. So the information that's contained within this station would automatically be reporting back to our topic hierarchy. Let's build it up here. So up here you have Utah, then you have SLC for Salt Lake City, then you have maybe city services, and then underneath the city services, we'll carry it over here, you have fire. Under fire, you may have station one, and then under station one, you have truck one. And then under truck one, you may have its location, its coordinates. You may have its speed, you may have a maintenance record, so forth, so on. So the traffic control system sees the engine approaching the intersection. So let's say we have a red light right here. So this information, the status of this, right? Remember over here we have Utah, SLC, we'll just, for simplicity we'll just call it fire, station one, truck one, location. And the location is right here. And it's coming barreling down the street, or bear with me. So it's publishing its data right, right to this truck one. Within the same topic hierarchy, instead of under fire, you have, just we'll bring it over here, under SLC, just imagine if you have traffic. Intersection one, or we'll call it intersection 52, and then under, these are little arrows right here. Like, so this is like going down and in one level. But under intersection 52, you may have a control to turn it on or off, or put it in emergency mode. So the workflow would look something like this. When this data point here gets triggered, we trigger this emergency response mode, which then makes its way back down to this traffic light. So this command right here goes to the traffic light, then let's say it makes them all turn red, so then the emergency response vehicle can come through. It's a little bit chaotic in this example, but I hope you get the idea how these two different data silos really depend on each other. And to do it in any other way without a unified namespace just wouldn't be possible. You know, there'd be a human being trying to map the data between the two, or you would spend way too much money trying to actually get the data to connect. So every light turns green or red automatically, no radio calls, no manual overrides. A single workflow slashes response times and clears the path for first responders. Workflow example, automated water distribution. In my career building water distribution SCADA systems, I saw those systems operate in complete silos. SCADA lived in its own bubble, disconnected from the city IT and business platforms. Flow rates, pump runtimes, electricity use, and data were all locked away where only certain people could access them, the certain operators or the managers. The teams focus on industry 3.0 processes and not industry 4.0 business optimization. The difference is, Industry 3 automated the manufacturing process, that's all they cared about, so in this case it automated the treatment plant, but it didn't take that treatment plant information and automate the smart city infrastructure. Today, that changes. With a unified namespace, wholesalers and distributors post flow requests directly into one shared backbone. So for example, if one city wanted to call a water purveyor, like for example, Metropolitan Water District, the largest water district, west of Mississippi in California, it, the amount of water that they sell is insane. It could fill up the Rose Bowl in like four hours. And I think that's just one of their treatment plan. It's, it's, an, it's an ungodly amount. I think it's like 700 million gallons a day or something. I, I Don't quote me. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. 
But these cities, they would sell to dozens of water districts. And the, the way that they would put in these flow requests is they would call up the operator and say, hey, I want to put in a flow request for to CFS. Um, none of this was interconnected. Like all of these different cities across LA each had their own water SCADA system. These adjustments now will start happening in real time with the systems communicating to each other. So it's no longer Bob entering information into his SCADA system, calling Joe at MWD, and he enters in information into his SCADA system. This information could be exposed through an API where it would tie into the unified namespace. So drought alerts could trigger automatic cutbacks. Compliance reports generate themselves. That's a really huge point in water treatment is like compliance. SCADA data now lives besides your finance data, your HR data, your energy feeds. Now you can like, optimize time of use and energy optimizations. You can schedule pumps around off-peak rates and save tens of thousands of dollars on your electricity bills. You can optimize your maintenance workflows. You can identify vibrations and detect early failures. The list goes on and on and on once all of this data is integrated and accessible. Section seven, another workflow example on smart building management. So picture you have a downtown high rise. So I live in a high rise but let's say you have, uh, uh, let's say this is your city hall. You live in New York City and the city hall building is a really big building and you know, it has like HVAC on the roof, maybe it has an industrial chiller, you know, maybe over here you have like over here, I don't know, let's say you have some solar panels. So you have some different functions and capabilities, you know, within the building and also you have lighting throughout on every floor so you have you know access control who's entering and leaving the building a building has so many capabilities if this is a city government building then you're going to want to make sure that you know it's we'll call this city hall that you know it's access control etc so all of this data that's contained within this building is going to be published into unified namespace so picture a downtown high rise let's say this conference room goes empty. No one's in here. So conference room five empties. The sensors detect the vacancy. The thermostat drops five degrees to save energy without sacrificing comfort. When an air filter's pressure climbs, the system triggers an alert to service the air filter. A maintenance ticket auto-generates before performance starts to drop. Energy savings dashboards update live. Your operators can see a 10 to 15% utility drop within weeks. Sometimes it's more than 30%. So this, this functionality typically would exist within a data silo. So, you know, imagine if this is just one big data silo and it's locked. You know, now you can't access it. You can't access it if it's a data silo. With a UNS, it becomes accessible. So again, you have your topic hierarchy, Utah, SLC, you have many, Ogden. Under this level, you'd have many cities. For example, let's just say Provo, and then under Provo, you have transportation or whatever, right? You have, you know, uh, city building, city services, you know, city hall, building management. The other thing that's crazy about this is if you're going all of this data all the way up to one common infrastructure at the Utah layer, then Utah could analyze, you know, it could take a look at Salt Lake City to see what they're doing and take a look at Provo to see what they're doing. And then, you know, maybe figure out why is like transportation so much more efficient in this city? You know, what could we be doing over here to get these two, you know, to sort of line up more, right? Like what could we borrow from innovation? Not just in, within a city, but within our whole country, honestly. Section eight, a workflow example, public transit optimization. So buses, light rail cars, and bike share docks all stream location and load data into the unified namespace. Now your transit riders get accurate arrival times on their applications. Operations teams spot crowding or delays and can instantly dispatch extra vehicles to meet the demand. Schedules can adjust on the fly and commuters can arrive faster because of this integration and timing. Transit agencies run more efficiently. And I'm a huge transit fan. Security and AI driven optimization. Security is built from day one. Critical sites, water plants, and power substations run on isolated UNS instances with strict access controls. So the local copy of the unified namespace 
for example, you know, you could have your water treatment division over here, and maybe they have a UNS right here, and that controls all the water treatment information. And then at a higher level, you have your city UNS. And then, you know, at a higher level, you'd probably also have the state level. But let's say at this level, you have the city UNS. This can publish the data right here, so then it's living right here. But this is read only. And then you have to be here in order to write commands back out to the field. So you can sort of have a firewall right here, but the data can still be accessible read only in the, in the enterprise. Only authorized systems can issue commands. One way bridges, pushes, sanitize, and read only status up to the citywide namespace and planners gain visibility without risking operations. With every bit of data, pump pressures, traffic counts, and payroll figures all in one place, you unleash AI. You can benchmark one city against another. You can learn why some cities solve outages in half the time. And you can see which maintenance schedules minimize costs. Predictive models surface the answers, letting you invest where it matters most, continually optimizing the outcomes for your citizens. Smart cities aren't about gadgets. They're about tearing down silos, automating life-saving workflows, and using unified data to make better decisions faster. The unified namespace is the blueprint for transformation, and it applies not to just manufacturing. It applies to smart cities, building management, water wastewater, the list goes on and on. At 4.0 Solutions, we've guided more than a thousand cities, agencies, and students on this journey. And now it's your turn. Are you ready to unlock your city's true potential? Let's build a future together. Subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.